Kevin Thibodeau coming up right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. So, you have an offset barbecue pit. You try to maintain temperature with those logs and get those target temperatures. Just don't seem to be working too well for you. What's a boy or girl supposed to do? If you've thought about some kind of draft system but never felt like one really fit your pit, you might want to listen to this next segment. He's created a product called the Perfect Draft Barbecue Blower. Let's go ahead and hit the hotline. Welcome, first timer of the show, Stephen Thibodeau. Stephen Hart, buddy. Doing great, Greg. How are you? Absolutely fabulous, Stephen. Appreciate you. Uh, did I get you on your cell phone or on your computer? You got me on my computer. Okay. Uh, go ahead and click your camera there so we can see you. And okay, let's we should be off and running. Here. I don't know. It's like Skype all of a sudden decided that they were just going to default to uh, <laughs> like no uh, no camera for whatever reason. So let me <laughs> grab your screen okay. here give me one second here we'll be uh, ready to go uh steven before we uh, get into the perfect draft itself uh why don't we get a little background about you and kind of your ties to the barbecue and grilling world as it were well um uh, i'm a long time lifer as far as barbecuing love to do it done it off my whole life and i started off in a barrel pit using charcoal Graduated up to the offset smokers and had a difficult time trying to maintain the draft and, and the fire on it, you know. And uh, one day I was just messing around with the pit. I uh, was actually cutting my grass, had a leaf blower, propped it up against the firebox. Air was kind of going into it, saw my temperature coming up. One thing led to another. Uh, I said, you know, the light bulb went off. So, you know, every every invention started with a problem that you had to have a solution to. So that's how I got to this point. Uh, from a professional perspective, Stephen, are, are you like in the business of barbecue and grilling uh, industry wise? Or are you like me, a guy who's kind of uh, outsider by day and insider after the uh, normal job? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sort of like you, you know, I've, I've been an avid barbecuer, just doing it backyard, never done competition before. Um, always went to competitions and, and found it very intriguing. But yeah, I'm, I'm just like a, you know, Sunday barbecuer on the weekends. And uh, that's pretty much it. So you were kind of caught up in a little bit of a frustration with fire management and that draft with the stick burner, which a lot of people are, of course, especially when they're first getting into it, kind of learning that whole fire management thing. Uh, thusly, the perfect draft is kind of born out of that frustration. How long does it take to go from, hey, I just saw what this leaf blower did to something that you start now generating prototypes? Uh, let's revise here. Let's revise there. Hey, now I have something that I want to bring to market. What kind of a time frame are we looking like that? Well, you know what, Greg, I started out with uh, a charcoal canister, the kind you just dump the charcoal in and light it and stuck a fan in it and um, had had some results with the temperature coming up, uh, graduated up to maybe four or five more rough prototypes. This is over a three year period. Uh, when I finally got something that was close to what we wanted and it appears that it was going to work. Um, it took about maybe three years of testing and, uh, we've been in business now for about four and a half months. Now I'm going to show you something. The first prototype we sent, I don't know if you can see this, <laughs> but this little device here. Yeah. This is, we paid $500 for this. Wow. And we sent the actual drawings off to a company. And the measurements they had was wrong, and this is what we got for the blower. <laughs> so this was this was the first prototype for the uh, perfect draft barbecue blower. You should yeah. have immediately called uh, Big Green Egg and said, "Hey, we got a draft system for the mini Big Green Egg right here. Here we go." Wow, that's yeah, small. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's small. <laughs> so, uh, and you're like, "Hey, man, you just completely misspec this. You gotta you gotta build me a new one." Yeah. Yeah, I was like, hey, uh, you got the measurements totally wrong. Uh, this thing should be at least 
eight times larger than what, what you've got here. So we went back to the drawing board, uh, got the, the measurements right, and then we came out with this one which is what we're currently selling on the market now. So yeah. it, it's taken three years, but you've been actively selling for four and a half months. Uh, so is that three-year period just getting something that you feel comfortable <laughs> taking to market like that one you just had up? That's the one where you decide, okay, here we go. We're going to take it to market. Right. Um, you know, it's, it started off, like I said, really crude with a charcoal canister and a fan shoved in it. Um, Three years, literally, of testing with that and a couple of really crude uh, prototypes. And then I finally, you know, said this thing actually works on, on a really, really uh, novel, just, just a basic level. So I knew if I could develop a nice temperature controller uh, to go along with it, then we would probably have something. Stephen Thibodeau joining me here on the show. The website, if you want to check it out while we're talking, uh, theperfectdraft.com, theperfectdraft.com. Uh, Stephen, look, draft systems certainly aren't new, especially to barbecue folks that are kind of in the segment. One of the most recognizable brands in this market happens to be my longest-running sponsor of my show, The Barbecue Guru. So tell me how The Perfect Draft, I guess, might be similar to something The Guru might offer but I guess more importantly, how they go ahead and, and start to diverge from one another. Well, the Barbecue Guru, like I said, I know it's been around for a long time, and uh, it's, it's a product that's well-known and it works. Um, our device is mainly made for from backyard offset smokers to competition style. I mean, uh, we have a variable speed fan that can go from – one CFMs of airflow all the way up to 124 CFMs of airflow. It connects magnetically, uh, and it and it does have a, a temperature controller built into it. So the Guru, I think, is more tailored for Komodo Weber's the smaller grills, where that's not really our focus. We're pretty much focused on the offset smokers, uh, competition style. You don't need to buy uh two or three different size fans because our fan that one fan accommodates uh various speeds that can handle from a, a small cooker to the larger ones so i think that's the that's the biggest difference and we're not looking to, to adapt to the weber grills uh so we're going to stay in our lane and you know i respect them and hopefully you know they'll look at us as uh, not a competitor but just another good device that's on the market that complements theirs Stephen, let me talk to you about operation uh, mounting, obviously, which we'll get into here in a second. But I guess, you know, from a high level, talk to me about uh, how this particular system will operate and how you want to go about setting it up to use for the first time and then ongoing. Well, how it operates, basically, Greg, you would attach it to your firebox where the air intake is. We have an automatic and we also have a manual mode. So in automatic mode, you would stick the probe, temperature probe that goes right here. And from here, it connects to the cooking chamber of where your meat is. You stick it in there under the lid. And then we have a setting on here where you can set the temperature at which you want to regulate uh, your, your barbecue pit to be. So you can set it for 250. The probe will register the degrees of the, the pit and the variable speed fan will kick up, get it to that set point. If it drops below the set point, the fan slows down and it turns off and it regulates, the fan will regulate on and off to maintain that temperature. And you can also, if you don't want to use the probe, you can switch it to manual mode on here. And then you control the fan speed. Uh, and depending on how much airflow you think you need, you set the airflow. And you look at your TI on your uh, barbecue pit. And from there, uh, you just maintain the temperature by using the variable speed controller in the manual mode. Uh, Stephen, it would seem, I guess intuitive that if you're going to be buying something like this you want to take as much risk or assumption out of your hands and use automatic mode do you find that from the reviews that you're getting and the feedback you're getting 
from your clients that they use automatic mode more than they use um, uh, manual mode? Or is there a real reason to use manual mode this way and automatic mode this way? No, you know what, Greg, I, I think most people, most of the feedback that I'm getting, they really love the automatic mode because they could set the temperature and pretty much walk away from it and it will regulate and control. Competition, uh, people who barbecue competition, they stay uh, overnight, all night. They're cooking for 20 hours plus. So for them, it, it's a big plus to control it in automatic mode versus the manual mode. When we talk about mounting it, and you had said a little bit earlier that the one side where you know it's sticking into the firebox or mounting onto the firebox, you have a bunch of uh, industrial magnets that are on there. Um, now, in the manual, there also is a hook that you can install into the firebox. Of course, uh, as I had uh, talked to you about an email, I, uh, I'm not handy, and when it says drill or anything about uh, measurements, or any, I, my, I start sweating both on the inside and the outside because, uh, A, I'm probably going to fuck it up. But, B, uh, you know, I just don't like drilling stuff into something that might have cost me thousands of dollars. So uh, talk to me about... You know, any feedback you're getting from customers that have, you know, similar uh, Dr. Phil issues and, you know, how to go about if you don't like doing it one way, can you really do it another way? Well, you know what? That was, a, uh, I guess, a huge obstacle uh, in my mind and whenever I, I thought about how is, how is it going to connect. I, I didn't want people to have to drill into their pit to modify anything. But because there's so many different styles of barbecue pits, uh, some that are out there uh, that are homemade, some that are professionally made, we couldn't get around it. So you drill a 3-8 inch hole into the firebox and a safety hook goes on. The safety hook is there just to hold it in place and secure it. The magnets can do the job, but if someone bumps into it, it, it will get knocked off. So uh, the magnets, the novelty of it is really cool. It's, it, it's a quick way to connect it. But the safety hook, you have to drill one hole, and that really secures the actual the blower onto the firebox. So that's why we, we have the hook. Uh, also, as far as the temperature probe, you do have the option of kind of installing that um uh, through drilling as well, but you can also just lay it on the grill grate, as you had mentioned before. Yeah, and, and you know what? Most guys I talk to, they prefer to lift the lid and put it inside the grill grate uh, because no one wants to put holes in, in their barbecue pit, especially if you have a laying or a bubble grill or anything like that, something really high dollar. So, And, and I can appreciate that, so it worked both ways. Stephen Thibodeau joining me here on the show, the perfect draft barbecue blower. Uh, Stephen, talk to me about once you have that initial bed of coals, and this is something that I ran into Sunday because, uh, A, I guess I didn't want to overuse your accessibility on a Sunday. Uh, but, you know, I also like to kind of learn by myself. My initial thought was get, you know, get some nice bed of coals going and then add a piece every 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Uh, but after I had got done talking to you about my first run, you're like, hey, you know, it's okay to, to kind of pack it up a little bit in the firebox, and this is the reasons why, because the barbecue blower is going to help combust and make sure that thing's burning clean, correct? Correct. Uh, you, you can load it up like you normally do, uh, put your better coals, and then put wood on top or just use wood. The key to it is you throttle back on the stack exhaust where you have your damper. You throttle back about 65 to 70%. And it tends to want to put the fire out. Well, that's when the blower kicks on and puts that clean ambient air into the firebox. We give you a clean combustion and it creates a, a positive draft across the barbecue pit. So if you load it up with a lot of wood and you have your stack damper wide open, your temperature is going to be too hot and the blower will never come on. And then you're just running yeah. like hot and fast like we talked it, exactly. about. Exactly. All right, so yeah. when you're throttling it back, as you said, that the fire wants to go out, now you have the blower uh, running on the firebox to create that positive airflow that you had mentioned. I mean, is there any in-between time where you might have a, a dirty fire or absolutely not? Absolutely not. Uh, you have a consistent flow of air 
and you have a clean combustion because, you know, a lack of airflow will give you CO2 and you get that carbon dark black buildup on your meat, which gives you that thick plume of white smoke coming out the stack. But with the blower, the fan never really goes completely off. It's just barely turning uh, at a really low one CFM's RPMs uh, of airflow. So you have a clean combustion the whole time the blower is connected. But the key, like I said, you have to throttle back on that stack exhaust and let the blower provide that airflow. Do you have a, like a, a maximum amount of logs that you should be putting in uh, before something might be overtaking the system itself and then you have a dirty fire situation? Uh, a maximum amount, you know what, Greg, it, it just varies because of the, the pins on the, the size of the firebox that, that you're really running. So I would say if you're using a 24-inch firebox, you can uh, put maybe four stacks of wood in it, get it lit, and uh, she, she's going to do a thing. And, and that should run for about, that should last you maybe about an hour and a half to two, two hours wow. before you have to feed one more stick in. The biggest thing these guys have been telling me on the circuit, uh, Clay Hill, uh, Jason Peterson, these guys are saying it reduces their cooking time. Uh, they use less wood, and uh, it's really efficient. You know, uh, I've got a lot of guys, Bruce Case, Danny uh, Gamez, so I'm getting a lot of good feedback. What feedback are you getting from customers as far as suggestions or, you know, the next evolution of the barbecue blower? Because you got to be uh, able to adapt. you got to be able to evolve to continue on in business. So are there things that you're seeing even four and a half months in that you're like, hey, you know what, that's something I'm hearing. That's a good idea mm -hmm. that, you know, the next time we're going to make a big change, this is something we're going to implement. Yes, you know, uh, they they want a longer probe. So the standard temperature probe that we have is six foot. Uh, people with larger barbecue pits are looking at nine foot or longer. Uh, so we've actually made an improvement there for the next one. Um, they're also uh, wanting like a meat, wireless meat thermometer to have it built in. But I think what we're going to do with that, we're going to team up with the company and provide a wireless meat probe that'll bundle up with our blower because there's so many on the market. Yeah. Uh, we feel that it's best just to team up with someone and, and use that accessory that's available. Uh, the other thing is the adapter. Right now we have a heat shield and uh, the adaptability of it with certain fireboxes, it is, you know, it may not fit perfectly. Yeah, mine. So we have it. Yep. Go ahead. Now, my, I, I was running into a similar issue with mine just because of the way the, the center bolt is on those pinwheel dampers on the lane. Uh, I was over one, but the other one was kind of wide open. Right, right. So we have a new adapter that, that's been developed. It's actually in manufacturing now. And that issue with, like, your lane, it will cover the whole little handle, the whole accessory, just cover it up. And uh, it should adapt a lot better for those, the Langs, the Oklahoma Joes, those types of uh, smokers. Uh, Stephen, before I let you go, price point, because everybody's uh, always wondering how much money we're shucking out. Right now, we're shucking out $200. And uh, the next blower, barbecue blower that's going to come out will just be slightly higher because we'll be bundling it up with uh, a wireless meat. Uh, pro and uh, so you we may top out at about I don't know maybe 230 but we're still competitive so I, I think that's a good price point. Stephen Thibodeau is the creator of the Perfect Draft barbecue blower you can find it at theperfectdraft.com and again right now it's 200 bucks maybe uh, blowing up to 230 depending on what they're going to be bundling with it the next time out uh, and of course I'll uh, continue to give you reviews here on this show as I get to hone my skills in on this product a little bit more. Stephen, really appreciate the time, man. Thanks so much. Hey, Greg, I appreciate you, man, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. All right. Thank you. There he is, Stephen Thibodeau from the Perfect Draft Barbecue System. How about that?